How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we're going to be talking about salary expectations in information security. I know if you're watching this you're kind of curious about well I'm sure people in cybersecurity make a good amount of money and I want to pursue that simply because of that. Before I tell you the responses I've gotten from doing a public ask of how much people make and before I divulge into how much I've made and how much I make I just want to tell you that cybersecurity is not for everyone. Uh, there are plenty of areas you can work in, which I'll talk about pathways into cybersecurity later in the video. But I would say you'll probably get burnt out in the job if all you care about is the money aspect of it, because it is pretty tiring trying to keep up with all these new standards, with all these new technologies and such like that. So. If you're not really, you know, really good at learning things fast, it might not be a good career field for you. I would just say that from my own personal experience. But if you're pretty high speed and you can catch on to things pretty quickly and you're able to just break away through red tape and just move forward with doing whatever you're doing, it's a pretty rewarding career field. Now, so what have I made working in security? Now, like most people, I did not start my career in security. I actually started in a related field. So I was a data center technician uh, starting at the age of 18, making $13 an hour, working 20 hour weeks. So nothing to brag about whatsoever. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good for it being 18, but I mean, again, it was 20 hours. Um, and my first job in security, I made $65,000 hour, I wish hourly, $65,000 per year. That was hourly, so um, I would typically get upwards close to about 80 plus thousand dollars yearly with overtime, especially if you're gonna be working on an incident response team or any team with paging duties, you'll typically find yourself working a ton of overtime. And I mean, a, a good chunk of overtime actually. So, I mean, if, you're, if you were making what I was making, you'd probably make close to $100,000. Um, and that is hourly. And that was an entry level analyst first security job I've ever had. Prior to that, I had, I think I had five or four, four or five years of IT experience before that. Um, what I currently make, I make well north of a hundred thousand dollars per year salary. Um, I'm not gonna say the exact number, but I'm doing pretty fine for being my age. Um, what I've made in the past. So I, I said my first IT job, um, uh, you know, I was making, you know, 13 bucks or whatever it was an hour. I could probably pull up the, my, my, uh, my pay stubs, but it wasn't much, but the, 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 the gap of where I've made money. So like I said, 13 bucks for like a, my first IT position, or if you want to count my first security position, it was $31 and 25 cents. I believe that's what it was all the way up to $450 per hour. So it's a pretty significant gap. The $450 figure comes from consulting. Uh, if you become a consultant and you work not at a huge consulting firm, but at a very small boutique consulting firm, you typically get to, I guess, reap more of the profits uh, depending on how the company structures. So my example, it was anywhere between 200, I think it was like 180 to 450 bucks per hour. Really depends on the contract and depends on the client, but then again, that's what I'm, that's kind of the money I'm talking about. And that's as a consultant, that's not owning a business or anything like that. So uh, I, I just want to get that out of the way, keep it short and simple. Currently I make well north of $100,000 per year working remote currently right now in the Seattle area. Um, and I've made upwards to $450 per hour, um, but as a consultant, not full time sort of thing. Um, so what have other people made? So on Twitter a couple months ago, I just made a Google Forms saying, what's your role, how much you make, how many years of experience and where are you located? And I got a pretty good amount of uh, responses. So I'm just gonna read some off for you. And I, uh, of course, will put the link to this down below. So a uh, cybersecurity engineer with seven years of experience, $115,000 per year in Seattle. Uh, another engineer with 14 years of experience making $230,000 per year. A developer, so that's that's refreshing to see. A developer um, with four years of experience, 110000 in Seattle. Um, we have senior threat intelligence analyst. Let's see what this one says. Uh, we have six years of experience making $170,000 per year in Chicago. We have a principal analyst with 10 years of experience making $175,000 per year in a remote location. 
Uh, let's see. We have, oh, this one's pretty juicy. So we have a QA lead and developer. I think they forgot to enter in how many years. They put zero, but they make $351,000 per year in Canada. So that just goes to show you that there is tons of money to be made here in cybersecurity. And if you heard all those numbers and you kind of like, holy, I want to change my degree from underwater basket weaving to something that is security related. Let's talk about pathways into security because security is a fairly large field. Most people, when they think of information security or hacking, they think of the red team where they're hands on keyboard doing terminal stuff and all that stuff. While that is very fun to do, that is the portion of security that a lot of people probably can't do. There is tons of areas that you could fit into that might not be hacking, but are still part of information security. As you saw right there, we had a response from a developer uh, and they make product. They, they are a software developer and they make security tools. So you'll have companies out there like Splunk, Tenable, Qualys, Rapid7, etc., etc. They make SaaS products, software as a service products, and they have a ton of developers making security products. So if you use Metasploit, they are owned by Rapid7. Um, so you could be a software developer. You don't have to know jack sh about security and popping shells on Linux and stuff like that. Uh, you have QA. So you have people working on the white team. So while I know tons of people, including myself, that do white team stuff, which is basically compliance, govern or GRC governance. I, I, I always forget what the rest stands for. It's basically just like governance standards and such like that and auditing. So that's like, okay, our business takes in payment cards. We have to be PCI compliant, you know, on these systems. This is what you need to do. Check, check, check. It's basically checking the box, making sure you pass your audits. Uh, you have this one that I'm studying right now called CMMC, which is if if you're in college or you're in high school right now, uh, <laughs> there's going to be a tons of businesses out there that are going to be hiring full-time security staff. And I'm talking about everywhere in the United States. This isn't just Chicago and San Francisco, New York and Seattle and such. This is going to be everywhere because this regulation with the what your white team at a corporation is supposed to kind of understand is, well, this regulation is going to prevent us from doing business here. It's a cybersecurity requirement. So the white team is kind of business minded. So uh, if you're a business minded person, you probably fit very well into the white team. If you're good at making products, uh, you'd be good on the yellow team and orange team, I think. Um, if you're good with responding to incidents and you kind of want to get that like, I did something today, uh, you might be, you know, fine and dandy on the incident response team, putting out fires and then writing reports about it. If you're really good uh, at reading and understanding books, you could be a cyber lawyer. Those people make pretty good money. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, if you're like a healthcare nerd, uh, you could do HIPAA compliance. There is literally like jobs out there that are like healthcare specific jobs and security that companies are hiring for. So, I mean, there's there's something out there for everyone, but keep in mind the same thing of me saying everything is really high speed. One day is not going to be like the other. That's going to be true pretty much across the entire board. So, uh, pathways in. So, college, like I said, um, is a great way. I, don't, I mean, people shame college, you know, for one reason or another. It's a great pathway into security. It's probably not the most ideal route as far as getting technical experience, um, but it is a great way to check the box at a lot of places like the FBI. They require a bachelor degree across the entire bureau for whatever reason, um, which I think is silly, but I digress. Um, so you have the very basic plain vanilla college route. Uh, the NSA, they have a high school program. If you are a US citizen, um, uh, they have a high school program, so you can work at the NSA in their cyber division. Uh, you might have, you know, mixed feelings about the NSA, but it's kind of like blaming, you know, the entire country for like a tiny portion of what, you know, a country does that's bad. Uh, the NSA has the intelligence side and then they have the cyber side, so you can pursue the NSA cyber side uh, while in high school. By the way, I'll put a link to that down below. Um, and then the one that I kind of benefited from was joining the U.S. military. And, th and th this isn't specific to the U.S. military, but 
uh, any military that uh, I guess is part of your country, if they have a cyber branch, uh, I would highly encourage you uh, to pursue that. Uh, for the US military, they put you through a lot of schooling um, and they pay for like things like sand certs and such like that. So they, I mean, they advertise this everywhere. Um, so if you're in the US and you wanna, you know, get a one up on everyone, I would say if, you, if you're able to like do National Guard or reserves, um, you know, you'll get the training that you would as an active duty soldier and then you get to reap the benefits of making a hundred plus thousand dollars per year. Um, and then, of course, the most important one is self-learning. Uh, in this field, I have noticed that if you do not have a, a drive to learn more and um, all of that, I don't, I, I don't have anything else to say. If you don't have a drive to really learn anything else, you're going to be left behind fairly quickly. So you want to be watching well, videos like this, I'm not trying to tell you to watch all my videos, but you're actively trying to learn more information. So um, it's reading books, it's engaging with your local DC chapter, it's starting your own DC chapter, uh, it's watching DEF CON talks, Black Hat talks, etc. Uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. The, the internet is filled with all sorts of information. So staying on top of all of that is important. But what's also important is proving your work because I could say I could do underwater basket weaving with two toes or I don't know. Um, but when it comes time to interview, they're gonna ask, okay, we'll prove it. That's how a lot of businesses work. Um, I don't have a degree or anything like that. I had a 2.3 in high school, so I wasn't the brightest star in the universe, but all, all businesses really care about specifically in this field is, okay, well, can you do it? So um, if you don't have any prior experience, make your own prior experience that actually to me when i hire people and i review resumes and such like that initiative is probably one of the top things i look for so i'm going to go ahead and pause the video real quick because while what i said is true being a self-starter is important when you're brand new and uh, honestly throughout your entire career uh, but when especially when you're brand new you have not been exposed to a lot of environments and different people and such like that uh, me just telling you be a self-starter and take initiative is kind of like empty. So I want to give some, I guess, substance to that. So uh, if you don't have any prior professional experience doing things such as making a GitHub repo and making scripts to do XYZ around the house, um, you know, there's a book out there called Automating the Boring Things with Python. Uh, and there's probably a plethora of more books out there about, you know, automating things with Python. Uh, famili familiarizing yourself with APIs. So like with Shodan, I believe you get API access. Uh, so maybe you can make a tool that will automatically send you a text message anytime your IP address shows up on Shodan. That's just maybe a project idea that you could put on your GitHub, which then in turn you could put on your resume uh, and a hiring manager will see that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Uh, another thing you could do um, is bug bounties. So doing some application-based security. So you're familiarizing yourself with the recon methodology, which you would end up using on a you know penetration testing environment um, and all that stuff. And then another important thing is report writing. So you do the thing you know, your, you know, bug bounty stuff and you make your report, that's going to be important. Uh, another important skill you'll have to have, uh, blue team stuff. Uh, I can't really think of much. I mean, you could probably do self-initiative stuff on Shodan. So if you find something that, I don't know, appears to be critical infrastructure online and, you know, you want to kind of do incident response, you can always report that stuff to CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, and uh, I believe their email is just sock at CISA.gov. I'll put a link to that down below, but like you can proactively find uh, issues like that and you can report it to the proper agency, CISA in this, in this case, and they can triage it and whatnot. And again, that's something you can put on your resume. That's self-initiative. That's something we all can probably do right now. Um, but yeah, those are just some ideas I wanted to float by. Anyways, on with the video. Especially for people that don't have any like professional experience. Any experience is a good experience as long as you're able to prove how you do something. Even if it's not the, the, the correct final answer, your thought process through the whole problem solving aspect of it is the important part. Because you can always teach someone how to do something. It's just the 
thought process behind pretty much everything you do is important. So those are some pathways into security. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So if you have any questions, um, if you have questions about salary negotiation, uh, I, I know B-Sides Las Vegas. I don't know about other B-Sides they have. Um, oh, they have like these different rooms. Um, higher ground. They, they, they talk about resume building and negotiating salaries because you don't want to lowball yourself. So uh, know what you're worth. Uh, I told you what my income was throughout my various years in security and such like that. So anyways, that's it for this video. If you enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification because I will be ramping more videos up uh, fairly soon. Anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all take care. Goodbye.